Hello there, brothers and sisters. Welcome to the Wear the Rope channel. One of the things I'd like to use this channel for, as well as the rope drills and the practice that that is, is to share other complementary practices that I see out there to help us all reach our athletic potential. Things that I've experienced um, and that I can recommend to you as well. And I've just finished Knees Over Toes Guys 12 week program called Zero and I want to summarize my experience with that for you here. So I first discovered Ben Patrick, also known as Knees Over Toes Guy on the internet, about 18 months ago and I saw some of the movements he was doing and they were quite similar to some of my Mindful Warrior movement, practice movements as well as other additional movements that I hadn't seen before. And so I played with them a bit in the gym, but I never gave it any structured practice. Um, and then about three or so months ago, or just over three months ago, I rediscovered his page and thought, you know what, I need a practice, I need something to dive into, to get my teeth into. Let me try his first program. It seemed like he'd got a lot more structure to what he'd done, and I wanted to try his first program of three called Zero. When looking on the internet for things that you want to try, for me, it comes down to does it work and that does it work is the proof is in the pudding and it's the transformation the person sharing their practice with you has undergone so someone like Wim Hof for me seems to practice what he preaches and, and this is another guy who you can tell the transformation it's been documented having entered my 20s with under a 20 inch vertical literally I don't know if he could touch the rim with his fingertips with no basketball anything else now entering my 30s with over a 40 inch vertical, more than double where I genetically started from. As well as the way the guy moves, um, similar to me with David Weck, he moves differently, but he backs up what he teaches in his movement. And therefore, I don't need no PhDs, no piece of paper to prove who you are, what you do, no doctrine, doctor's papers. How is your body? For me, that's your PhD. Your, your, the proof is in, is in how you move. And this is another guy like that so I wanted to experiment with this program and try it myself. Now I've had uh, three knee surgeries, two meniscus tears and one chip bone in my knee um, that's caused me problems in the past so a program that promises to or to bulletproof your knees is certainly something I'm interested in but more recently than the knee issues is what's kept me out from training parkour and a lot of other practices I want to do is my ankles have been giving me issues. So this program, I've seen lots of people getting results for knees, but I also see people getting results for ankles as well. So I wanted to try, see if this could help me with that. So in this video, I wanted to share with you my full review. Things I noticed in my body, changes, niggles and injuries that went away. Um, would I recommend it? Hint, I can save you the full video. Yes, I would recommend it. Why it worked, why I think it works, um, we'll get into that. Any adjustments I'd make, any changes, things I'd add that I think are missing, we'll get into that in this video. So start off with a summary of the training itself. So his program Zero is called Zero because you can do it with zero tools and you can start with zero knee ability and build up. What I really like about uh, the way Ben structured it is it's completely regressible to all levels. You can see in videos on YouTube of his 67 year old mother doing the same program. Um, anyone with any knee ability can start this. And the key, the real key here is that he urges you never to push through pain. And there are a few instance, instances within this program where I noticed that. I think it was, I've got some notes here. On week four, I had a sharp pain in my left knee doing the ATG, the split squat, which was one of the, the fifth movement in the program. And so I, I heightened the level of the platform I was on and I used the door handle so I could control it. And it made it almost pain free at that point. And I did that for one session and literally the next session I could go back to normal and it was strong again. Um, so things like that I think are really key to note if you're going to do the program is don't be scared to regress, really listen to your body. I think that's so important, that's something I've been practicing for years anyway, it's listening to your body and never pushing through pain. And I love that Ben structured it in this way for anyone that, to do it. So the movements within the program and how it works is they want you to build from the ground up. So it's you start with the feet and that speaks to me with my ankle issues. I wanted to solve these ankle issues. So starting from the ground up. So the first thing you do is actually, because it reverse out knee pain, where you're supposed to walk backwards on a treadmill or dragging a sled or just in the park on the grass. And I did this a few times, but as I was doing most workouts in my living room, um, it was very tedious and it was a lot of turning around. So the other option they offer you is to do these poliquin step-ups, which is similar to what I did in the Mindful Warrior program where you step backwards up the stairs 
and you lift the ground foot off using the top leg to, dr to drive you upwards. And so what we did, and, and I want to shout out my partner who joined in most workouts with me as well, Hayley, um, we just did these sets, we did a few rounds of this uh, to do the warm up first and then straight into the, the first exercise after that is these tibialis raises where you're on your heels, bum against the wall and you really try and bring your big toes up towards your knees as strongly as you can so you get this, this fat shin muscle here, a deep burn in the, in, in the tibialis basically. And as I was doing this, a really good quad engagement as well um, and so that was really nice exercise and you can really, within 25 reps, you can get a good burn in the, in the shin. Uh, as I went on, I, this became easier, so I started to adapt different things into it, doing it on the slant board, doing single legs, and really just exploring around the muscle to try and find activations where the muscle feels like it's dormant, and just searching at different angles within, the, and, and that seemed to, to really make a change over the 12 weeks. The next exercise after that is uh, the FHL calf raises, where you lean against the wall, and uh, you're essentially doing straight-legged calf raises, um, Again, you start on two legs, then you, you regress to one, uh, progress to one leg as that gets easier. Now this is something, again, I, I did a bit of exploration with. I, I did it mostly as programmed, um, but I've got a video coming out to show some of the ways I adapted it. But this was able to get a really good deep burn in my, in my quad. I explored, the, you know, the foot's a tripod, so sometimes I explored going over the big toe, then sometimes I'd go over the fourth toe, and you'd get a different part of the calf as you, as you burn these parts out. And, and towards the end, I would less focus on getting the 25 reps in and more focus on just getting a deep burn in specific areas of my calf. And, and so I'd use the movements that he'd prescribed um, and then seek within my body to, to find the activation that I, that I knew he was after. And so that's the thing with the program is to get, it just gets you moving. And if you just follow the program to a T and you just do the rep count, you will get a good workout. Um, but I think the intention is literally to get you moving and working muscles that may be dormant or not activated. And so I kind of, took that and ran with it a little bit with the way I did the program. The exercise you do after that is these knees over toes calf raises. So it's similar to that, the FHL one, except you bend the knee forwards and then lift. Now this felt really good um, for my ankle actually sometimes. If I didn't do it too intensely and I used my stability board, um, I was able to get a gentle roll into it and it didn't stress my ankle um, and it was able to strengthen that. And I'd get these nice shakes at the front position where I could feel the stability wasn't that strong there and it was able to strengthen it. And over the, the 12 weeks, that got much better. The exercise after this is the Patrick step. Um, a movement I didn't actually, I, this is a movement I actually ended up taking out towards the end of the program. Um, and I, I, because I've got some Achilles issues, um, I ended up doing some Achilles sets on the slant board where I'd kind of stand downhill on the slope and one foot at a time actively kind of compress the Achilles. Then the movement after this, you go into the ATG split squat. Uh, and this really is the crown jewel of the program. And this is what Ben talks about, is the single most powerful move. That if you could do one move in practice, this is the only one he'd do. And this is where you do basically a single leg squat. You lunge forward and drive the knee really far over the toes as far as you can. Uh, and you can regress this, you can make the foot a bit higher. And so I experiment with this, I'd, I'd lift the foot a bit higher. I'd use wet steps to stop the inside ankle bone collapsing on my inside on the on the front foot, um, and this this progressed nicely. In the beginning, I was I'd get just pure body weight. I'd get really hot really quickly, um, and it would feel, feel intense, quite intense on my nervous system. Then, as 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 the weeks progressed, and as I said, in week four, I got the the knee niggle. I regressed it. It got better. It happened again in week seven. Um, no, in week ten, on my right knee, I got a strain in the patella tendon. And again, I regressed it for one session and then it was right back to where it was. So I will say really listening to the body and that is the biggest, and I'll, I'll probably highlight it again, is never pushing through pain with the program, but it really helped. Um, it, it, it helps. Over the 12 weeks, I noticed uh, I was able to get deeper. I started to add weight about after about halfway in the program. I, was, I started to wear a weighted vest. Occasionally I'd do it with kettlebells in my hands. Um, but the trick was not to rush into this. And like I said, in the beginning, I'd get this movement would be intense. I'd feel like fatigued afterwards. My central nervous system would be a bit fried. And as the weeks went on, it became a lot more manageable as an exercise. The reason I think this is, this is, this is the, the magic within the program and what is so missed in most training and what him and his, the guy who helped him create the program, Keegan Smith, talk about is short range strength and long range strength. And this for me, and I'll get into it now, is why I think this program works so well 
for the for knees. Um, and so when you're doing the tibialis raises, the first exercises, you're getting maximum contraction in the quad. So it's the maximum shortening. And I realized before this program how little off, how very rarely I maximally contract any muscle. And this is something I learned with wet method as well as about taking slack out the system. So when I pull my toe up and I fold forward, I'm able to contract a lot more than if I drive my toe and I lean backwards. This muscle can get a real, imagine you're wringing a sponge out. So the muscle wants deep, deep contraction. So in the tibialis raise, you're getting a deep contraction. So it's at its shortest length while working. And then as we go to the ATG split squat, it's at its, it's, it's lengthened out. You've got the, the shin muscle pulling this side and it's, you're driving forward over that toe and the quad's working athletically with weight at range, at length. And so between the two of the maximum contraction to the maximum length, it's the ebb and flow, the fire and ice, the push and pull that helps the muscle to work. What, what I've done for years with parkour or strength training is train, train the quad muscle in a mid range. When you're doing squats with both legs at a time, you never can get the full depth as if you did one leg at a time. You can get much deeper on one leg when it's the sole focus than when you're trying to get two legs. So you're never quite getting that full, full depth that's possible when you train one leg. Um, and so years and years of parkour, landing, jumping, always in this mid range, but never going to full single leg range, full depth. Um, I feel like that's where the transformation comes from within this program. The next exercise after that is the sissy squat or knees over toes squat where you do these uh, bilateral two legs together and you drive the knees forwards and you lean backwards. Um, keep it with the glutes engaged and you get this kind of, kind of up dog from yoga, this position going but kind of a vertical up dog. Um, and this is one I noticed the most improvement of throughout the program. By the end of it, I started on like four bricks of these one inch yoga blocks I was using, four or five bricks. And you do five sets of this so each set I'd kind of I'd go lower, but sometimes I'd only be able to go between like four and three or four to two. Um, and by the end of the program, I was able to do a complete set to the floor. It wasn't completely balanced, but for the most part, I'm happy with how that was. And at the start of the, the program, wasn't, wasn't even close. The, the strength I was able to gain throughout the way they've structured the program over the 12 weeks in that position, I felt a lot more confident, a lot more stable, um, and was able to yeah, literally go knees to the floor by the end of it. Uh, which I could never have been close to at the start. So it's really nice to, to stick to the structure, to notice progression, um, never to be too fried compared to like lifting weights. You go to the gym and you do a, a deadlift session, a squat session. You can be completely like body screwed for days at the doms that comes off it afterwards. I never noticed, I did get some doms in the calves more than anything to be honest. And I was doing a lot of hiking in between. I didn't do too much other training, um, but I'd get a, a, quite intense calf doms as that muscle's uh, waking up. Um, but the thighs and the other stuff, I was able to recover from well and notice the progress as I went. So after you finish, those are the main uh, strength movements of the program, you go into some stretching and he talks about these athletic standards that you should be able to do. Like the top athletes in the world can have these natural standards quite naturally, but you wanna aim towards these. So we did these elephant lifts. I've never been able to put my palms on the floor um, standing on my feet. Normally I could get my toes and throughout the program doing these elephant walks, I finally was able to, to get palms to the floor. Um, although I did modify this slightly, I, I did some experimenting using the stability board um, while I did them, um, using toes raised. I, I played with the movement a little bit, but again, it's about getting activation and waking up the muscle, but recognizing that stretching is actually strength training. I've done yoga for years and never gained mobility like I've actually gained in this program because looking at the, the body, the muscles, as you need to strengthen them at the end range and not just passively to stretch them, made all the difference. Um, so yeah, there's some stretching. There's, then there's the piriformis stretch, again, kind of like pigeon pose, I had to adapt this. It took me a few weeks of doing it his way, then realizing actually I'm not making progress. Let me try and find the activation and where my body feels this movement's gonna work. And once I did that, like a, like a light switch went off, and I was able to progress in my pigeon pose for the first time. Um, again, all the yoga I've done, all this stuff, didn't make progress. But when I actually listened to my body and thought, okay, this muscle wants to get stretched, but strengthened. How can I strengthen this muscle here? And then how can I kind of like wake, wake it up and then mobilize it? Thinking of it like that changed how, and I, 
it worked and I was actually able to make progress in that. So yeah, elephant lift, piriformis stretch. Um, they did L-sits in the program. In the, I didn't make much progress with the L-sits even though I did two one minutes every single session. Towards the end I realized I need to regress that L-sit even more and once I regressed the L-sit, it felt like a lot more beneficial rather than it was just a big fight every set. And I don't think to make progress you should be gritting your teeth and trying to you know, knuckle down and get through every time. If you can make it where there's like a, the right level of, of pain but you can feel comfortable in what you're doing, that was where the progress came. And so once I scaled elephant lift back to just actually being on a countertop and not trying to get my legs straight, it felt a lot more the right activation I feel it's after in my core. The other stretch that you do is the couch stretch. And this, again, I didn't notice too, I noticed a bit of improvement when I tried to activate my quad in the position or, or tried to drive through the foot. Um, but I think as I move on to the other program, the Nayla program, that for someone with my quad muscles that's already been built, the couch stretch isn't as effective, where I need another method, which is um, the knee extension that he talks about in other videos to get my quads longer. So we'll see if that works as I go forward into the next program. But the couch stretch didn't really work for me. So if you are an athlete who's got strong quads already, quite tight, strong quads, maybe look to do the knee extension rather than the couch stretch for the program. Another thing I liked about it uh, is the program itself is that it's not so intense that you're, it's daunting because you do do it three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, if it was an intense program like, is it P90X or is that it? So, you know those in, intense core program uh, programs people do and you're like absolutely murked at the end of it. This wasn't like that. It, it, you can scale it up and you can make it intense and it's, you know, when you're pushing it, you can get a really deep burn in your in your calves, in your in the foot muscles, in your in your quads. However you want to work it, you can really focus and, and hone in. But at the same time, it's not daunting to start each session. It says the pro each session can be done in about 30 minutes, and I think if you are really strict with your time and you stick to it, you could probably do it in 30 minutes. But 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 for me, I never rushed it. I always wanted to make sure I got a good burn in each area that was intended to work. And I also added my own little bits on as I went. So it did take me at least about 60 minutes per session by the end. So that's a rundown of the program and how I adapted it and, and how it went for me. I want to talk about now is the results I actually noticed. So the intention of the program is to bulletproof your knees. And I actually noticed a huge improvement in my knee health. My knees feel 80 to 90% better than they were at the start. Little things like uh, even just ground sitting, I'd feel a lot of stress. This is my meniscus tears were both on the outside of my knees. So anytime there'd be strain like this, I wouldn't be able to stay for more than a minute or two. And even filming this video, I've been able to sit here um, the whole time. My left knee used to pop every time I was in bed and I'd straighten my left knee. And in, within the last year or so, I noticed it started to pop a lot. That's, for the most part, that's completely gone now as well. My right knee at the beginning when I used to do the elephant walks and I remember doing yoga sometimes and standing on the light, right knee and locking it out would feel kind of stiff at the back behind, at the back of the knee. That's gotten so much better, I've not actually noticed that in ages. One of the keys to this program zero, before you move on to the other programs, is that this is about that most injuries happen in deceleration, not in acceleration. So it's improving your ability to break. So it's not about building strength and uh, like gains like explosive strength and vertical yet it's just about your ability to take kind of vertical and landings and what one of the things i noticed when i went for a hike with my friends on my birthday was walking we went to penny fan in wales the highest mountain in south wales and just walking down how much more confident i felt on my legs and how how so much stronger they felt on the deceleration and that is the, the program's working in that sense so as i said the aim of the program, bulletproof your knees. I couldn't. I don't think there's a better program in the, on the internet. Anything close to it, I would recommend it for athletes that, to prehab before you get injured. Athletes that need to recover. Like I said, I've had meniscus tears. If I went to the doctors, I've had times when I, I thought I've got early on that onset arthritis. Um, I've been for like multiple day hikes and got back, and just my knees have just flared up, and I've been limping for like two weeks afterwards. And I just think this is just change the game like you don't need a label on your issue in your knee um, you can you really can solve things yourself I really believe in the power of the human body and I think something like Ben's hard work here he says this is the program designed for himself if he, when he had the issues when he was a teenager to help him have a, a more fun you know basketball teenage youth that he could have had then that he's having now um, he talks about 
the goal is to play without inhibition. And when you understand that word inhibition, to play without inhibition as a 30 year old human is almost you know unheard of other than like the top athletes who are still going strong. But for, for most athletes, even most athletes and most adults, Imagine playing without inhibition at that age is is a dream, right? And so when I heard him say that, that was one of the things that drew me to the program because that he backs it up. He looks like he can move without inhibition with his knees. And so that's something that I'm after. And I can see how with this program and, and the continuation, I'm, I'm saying I'm not there yet, but I could, I've, I'm, I've took some big steps on that ladder towards, towards that no inhibition and I actually feel so much more comfortable and confident in my in my lower body right now because of this program so i've got to be honest with where i think the program miss it is a knee program so that's the goal of it so this isn't a knock on that but it, it in the program in itself didn't help my ankles like I, it's helped other people's and it, of course the bo human body is so complicated you can't just say i've got an ankle issue and prescribe one pill and it's going to solve it although that kind of is working with the knees for some people it's not an ankle program so it's not they've not it's not, not spent the time to cultivate that yet um, so I can see how helping the knees has helped some people for their ankles because you're working all the muscles that support it. But for me, it was an inside ankle issue on both ankles and the program itself didn't actually do anything really that I know, maybe a little bit to help it. But what it did do was provide me the time in my body, the space to explore, to listen, to find ways of moving without pain. And within that, I really feel I've made like a 90% a plus improvement on my ankles um, as well. But that's because of my own side programming that I added to it. And I will do a separate video on that because it, I understand the frustration doing this program and six weeks in being like, my knees feel great, but my ankles still feel the same issues that they felt before. That was quite disheartening to me because I really thought this was going to be the, the silver bullet to solve it, to solve my ankles. And it wasn't. But... It provided me the space to what I believe I've found as the silver bullet for my ankles. And so for anyone else out there who is doing the program, who's got ankle issues, who the program hasn't helped them with, I'm going to do a separate video in the next month sometime on three exercises, three main exercises that have really helped my ankles that I wish, in the way Ben has done it for himself if he was younger, that I wish I knew this three years ago because I would have had a different the last three years, but I do not regret for a moment the journey I've been on to get to here. And I'm grateful for Ben and his passion and his push to say if you to turn into your problems and try to solve them. And he's allowed me and given me that drive to to try to fix this. And I feel like I've I've made good headway in that. So stay tuned for that. Another thing it the program can't do, and because it's not the the aim, is that we need to recognise a little more sometimes. I think in mainstream uh, society with injuries and ailments of the body, of the physical body, that there's often an emotional reason or cause for them to exist. Something that we're not looking at in ourselves. And anyone that's dug deeper into this recognises, you know, we talk about the left side of the body, the right side of the body has a male and a female. And, you know, knees can mean one certain issue in your, in your emotional state. Shoulder can mean something else. And there are um, books and stuff about this, and I, I can link some stuff below. Um, the body is the barometer for the soul or, or these kind of stuff. The body keeps the score to recognize that there is an emotional reason often for why we hold on to injuries. That's obviously not the point of the program, but um, it's good to recognize and it's good to do that other work because I've, I've been studying so much divine truth recently alongside this stuff. And that has been another incremental part of my healing journey as well. From a physical standpoint, though, I, I, the only things... And I understand Ben's condensed the program. It doesn't want to go on, doesn't want to be too infinite. And so he's condensed it to the most key movements he thinks you need for knee health. Um, the only additional things other than the ankle program that I did for myself, if you have ankle issues, is hamstring bridges um, is something that I found really useful and realized how weak I was in my hamstring. And that's simply lying on your shoulders and driving your heels into the floor to lift your bum um, and try and keep a straight line from your knee to your hips to your shoulders and then doing this single leg at a time doing it um, on a foam roller really helps activate the calf hamstring kind of connection and i know he doesn't want to make the program go on forever but this is one thing i added in and i thought is really crucial especially as uh, aspirations to move on to his next program dense which has nordics in which is a massive hamstring movement i want to do a bit of prep work before i got there and i think it is a huge point of stabilizing the knee and so hamstring 
bridges but done like in a runner's in a horizontal runner's pose was something I added in twice a week and they were really good. Uh, I, I felt good improvement in them and I think they really helped to stabilize the back chain of my leg. So some final thoughts about the program. I think my knees feel, like I said, 80 to 90% better than they were at the start. I, th I had three knee surgeries. I literally feel like I would have been prescribed early arthritis if I would have had scans on, on them. Um, so if you've got anything, any issues like that, I'd recommend it. Remember, the number one key rule for the whole thing is never push through pain. Um, it should feel manageable. If you can improve 1% each time, then you're improving by 1% each time or half a percent. It doesn't really matter. If you're making progress, you're making progress. And regression, as he says, can be the key to progression. Um, so I just want to give a huge thanks to Ben, the Athletic Truth Group, Keegan, for what they've done here. Another point I would really have to strengthen strongly advise along with never pushing through pain is how much diet plays a factor now i love when i find feedback tools for how uh my how i'm living each day lets me know whether i need to change my ways or be better or what i've done is right and so with a program like this three times a week if i didn't eat cleanly i'd, I'd notice it it would make my sessions harder i'd feel more cracks in my knees so Literally, the two main things were sugar and bread. If I if I had no sugar and bread, I would the sessions would feel great. I'd feel notice progress quickly, rapidly. Um, if I the more I had bread or a bit of sugar, it would make the sessions harder. If I overdid it, like mass, if I overdid it, just you know how it is, um, it would it would make me a bit more daunting, and I'd have to like regress a little bit. So that might not be an issue for you. Everyone's got their own strengths and weaknesses with the digestion and but if it is something for you and you have got knee issues i'd strongly recommend and as no one would really disagree with this looking at diet and if you can move to more whole foods and take out especially bread gluteny foods and um and sugary refined sugar if you can stick to i eat mostly rice and fish rice and venison mints some fruit you know you can have a, a few treats here and there but really watching what you do and the more you can be clean with that, the more results you will find. And that might be the reason your results aren't, or you're finding problems, or you're getting inflamed in your joints, is because you're not looking at diet as well. So that's one key thing I think you, you have to be aware of. I will say when I started the program, I just couldn't wait to move on to dense. I was like looking at the later videos, like salivating, like, oh, I just wanna get onto the strength building and that stuff. Um, but I, I humbled myself, I settled into it. And actually by the end of the 12 weeks, I felt, kind of sad that I was going to move on and I was like oh am I going to miss my routine that I've got going now um, but today was the first day of dense and I'm actually it felt great I'm really excited to get I'm pumped to move on with this but I'm glad I respected the 12 weeks that he's created for zero and the way Ben's structured it here and I would strongly urge you to respect that as well if you are um, kind of new to getting into physical movement or you, you've not got that baseline or you've got any issues at all do it, just trust, put your trust in someone else. It's not often I can put my trust in another coach, genuinely. It's rare I meet someone, I go, you know what, I can tell this guy's onto something, I'm just gonna do it the way they say. And when I find that, and I, I applied it, I'm, I'm very glad that I did in this case. Um, I also wanna give a huge thank, thank you to Haley, my partner, who did pretty much every workout with me from the beginning. And so that, that's actually amazing. And there's sometimes, a, a few did it without her, which were also kind of nice as well, but actually, for the most part, having someone with me that joined in with me was so useful. So if you've got someone in your life that is up for it as well, up for joining a few sessions a week or however they want to do it, strongly recommend that. That, that really helped me get through it. It's cool, so thank you so much for watching. I hope this video helped you, enlightened you in some way. Whether you're thinking about doing the program, you're already in it, it just gave you more fuel to keep going with it. I strongly urge you to keep going with it. As I say, I'm moving on to dense now. I'm excited for this first week. I'm going to follow it as prescribed and Again, I'll, I'll hope to do a review at the end. Maybe we'll share some footage within this, this week. We'll see how we go. Um, but yeah, stay tuned. I've got a video coming on how I adapted Zero along the way. And I've got, I'll do that um, bulletproofing your ankles video as well within the next few weeks or so. So stay tuned for that. S stay tuned. Stick around for some of the rope content. I really think the, the rope is programming the software of the body into good patterns of movement. And this is how we get the hardware. And Keegan talks about it, and I can't disagree with him when he says you have to get the hardware first, or 
software can make up a few percentage of how athletic you are, but hardware is the predominant part. So we get the hardware right with programs like this, with what they've structured here. We can work on the software as well with the rope, get those patterns moving as well, help with the biomechanics there. And this is how we reach our athletic potential. And so it's just great to be a part of this at this time. Athletic Truth Group, WEC Method. This, the future is great for all of us, for us home athletes, um, for, for professional athletes. New levels, new heights are going to get reached and hopefully injury free for many more people because it doesn't have to be this way. And I hope to help you in some way on that journey as I'm helping myself, just sharing what I'm learning. God bless.